Hi, so let's start with who are you? Hi, my name is Devin Lofredo, and uh, I am with an organization called NoiseIvy.org. And uh, we're here at the Internet Identity Workshop, the 14th one of those in Mountain View, California in April. I'm sorry, this is May now, uh, 2012. And you've been talking to people about this idea called sovereign... Sovereign source authority. Sovereign, sovereign identity. Wow. So what is it? And So the so, easiest way to understand sovereign source authority is the idea that, uh, you know, it's, it's the creative power that we possess as individual human beings to express ourselves and, and what we take into each of the transactions that we have with other individuals, other organizations. And it's the way I express it is as an abstract com, uh, construct against an administrative identifier that is often the way in which we participate in the world. So what's an, ab, what's an administrative identifier? An administrative identifier's, identifier would be any account-based identifier. So. Uh, when you're inside of Google, you're using an administrative construct to participate in that structure when you are... So, give, so for example, that would be like my Google email address or something? Your Google or? email address, it would be also uh, like your citizenship identity, right? It, it would be the way in which you participate in an administrative structure, managing your rights. Okay, so it's administered by somebody else besides you. Exactly. And, and so what's the sovereign... So s sovereign... the. The uh, way that I like to uh, develop the idea is kind of using John Hancock as a muse, right? When we look, think back about the founders of our country um, and, and what was the authority that they presented to even suggest that they could form a, a new union of mankind, right? It was okay. the sovereign source authority of John Hancock and his peers as expressed in the Declaration of Independence with the signature that's now famous that stands behind that authority mm -hmm. to say that here we are, a, a group of individuals declaring of our own volition that we are free, that we have these rights and, and we can now institute upon those rights the formation of governance and the rights of man that we now possess as an administrative structure for the rest of us. So that's, uh, that's sort of like innate, you're born with it, it comes with you? Exactly. Sort of identity? Right. Um, how do those two work together, or do they? Well, I, I think that in, in the best of cases, the sovereign source authority is always present, where the administrative uh, authority is something that can be given and taken. And it's a much more, as uh, someone said here at this conference, a much more brittle structure that in the brittleness of it is kind of how we can always find a way to claim back that sovereign power that we possess to to disable an administrative structure and perhaps take ourselves over to a new structure. The problem as we build this network that I see is that um, you know it was almost implied in a lot of the writings of our founders that we were participating in an experiment that there could be a day in which we need to uh, rethink, redraft, re revolutionize our structure again and that you know this was something that would constantly need to evolve and the amendment structure that we possess as a, as a nation would feed into that. However, we're finding ourselves more and more locked into the administrative structure of our participation so that where there was a sovereign point of origin for founding the independence of our nation, now we each as citizens are, are managed by our government as administrative structures and find our rights within it. We, we almost in a statement of omission have uh, lost that sovereign origin to declare our own independent actions in the world and instead need to have walked through the gateway of participation in order to have the rights applied to us. It almost sounds like the difference between human rights and civil rights, where human rights are independent of any government, they're supposed to, they're defined to be inalienable, you can't take them, give them up or take them away. Yes. And it, it, it is similar to that because you think the law doesn't really make pre-law distinctions very well, right? From the standpoint of law, all things begin at the moment of definition. So I think that it's, it's the notion that there are certain rights and possessions that we come into this, into this world with, devoid of them being given to us by any national construct of man. So Devin, wh where can we learn more about uh, this topic? 
Well, I, uh, I write pr- profusely at moxytongue.com. Okay. And I am a participant in Project VRM, where this tends to take on a, a little bit of a market spin because the project is about empowering individuals to possess and hold their power in a structure that uh, is outside of the vendor administrative construct. And so there's a lot of synergies that takes place in that conversation about, you know, when we're claiming back power to the individual, how does it structure itself in the marketplace? And uh, so you can find me uh, on that mailing list as well. I'm a a very active participant. And uh, how can people reach you? Uh, I'm reachable through noiseivy.org. You can reach me at uh, no, also at noiseivy at gmail.com. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.